can you do keto if you have gout? Okay, the thing is, is gout is a very unique kind of arthritis. It's where you have urate crystals that are forming in the joints. Now, there's a lot of evidence out there that shows, oh yeah, a ketogenic diet could be very good for gout. But then there's also a whole world, a whole bunch of bodies of evidence that show that keto, based upon what you would eat with keto, would be bad for gout. So we need to kind of dive in, look at the research, because I am confident there is probably a way that you can do keto, you just have to make some modifications. After this video, check out Ujido Matcha. They are a supporter or sponsor of this channel, but they are a 187 year old matcha green tea company. So if you're doing keto or you're fasting, matcha green tea is really what you wanna be sipping on throughout the course of the day. It's my favorite drink to sip on after I have my coffee. And the cool thing is with Ujido Matcha, they've made it right. They've harvested the green tea leaves, baby green tea leaves in the shade in Japan. It's just done right, and I appreciate that they really keep history involved with it and it's like a real state-of-the-art matcha company so there is a link down below for you to check them out and a big thank you to Ujido for the continued support and a big thank you to you for trying them out they have their sweet matcha which are in little packets that you can have they have collagen matcha which actually is matcha along with collagen still totally sugar-free and then they have like the ceremonial grade and the regular matchas too so that link is down below thanks for checking them out so the Journal of Inflammation Research published a paper and it showed that what is called the NLRP3 inflammasome was a huge player in gout, okay, is a huge player in the pain and inflammation associated with gout. The NLRP3 inflammasome is sort of an inflammatory cascade that happens as a result of white blood cells kind of just forming, right? So it's part of the inflammatory response and we see it in a lot of different things, but with gout it's very specific, the NLRP3 inflammasome. So, at the surface level, we say, okay, well, if we can kind of mitigate and modulate this NLRP3 inflammasome, then we can control gout. Well, we may be able to potentially control the flare-ups. You see, the onset of gout is still being researched. We don't necessarily know what causes it over the long term. We know what is triggering it. Okay, it's urate crystals that are forming in the joints. But why do some people get these urate crystals eating equal amounts of meat as people that don't get these urate crystals, right? So perhaps there's an epigenetic or a genetic thing going on that we're unaware of or that's still getting investigated. I don't know, I'm not an expert in that field. But the point is, is that this is where it gets confusing because the ketogenic diet as published in the journal Cell Reports and other studies, is very good at inhibiting the NLRP3 inflammasome. Ketones, beta-hydroxybutyrate, the molecule that you are creating when you are uh, converting fats into ketones, beta-hydroxybutyrate. These studies show that that inhibits the NLRP3 inflammasome. It slows down the activation of that, slowing down interleukin-1-beta, which is associated with the pain and inflammation that you have with gout. So that would make sense that we'd say, okay, well, absolutely do the ketogenic diet. It's going to solve all your gout problems. Well, again, perhaps it can help when it comes down to gout flare-ups and kind of like reduce that, perhaps. But we also have to remember that most of these NLRP3 inflammasome studies are done on mice. And the thing that we have to remember, although these are very relevant studies, when they're done with mice, they are giving mice a very high fat, very low protein ketogenic diet. So it's very specific because they're trying to induce ketones, high levels of ketones. The ketones are the anti-inflammatory effect, not necessarily the diet itself. So then when we jump over and we look at the human keto diet, and there's nothing wrong with what I'm about to say. There's nothing wrong with this kind of diet. It's just how we do keto, and I do it, right? Well, we eat a lot more meat than what a mouse would be eating on keto, right? We're eating high amounts of meat, which have high amounts of purines, which form uric acid. That uric acid forms those urate crystals. Those urate crystals go into the joint, and when the urate crystals are in the joint, then you have a buildup of macrophages, and those macrophages trigger the NLRP3 inflammasome to trigger that that pain, that inflammation, right? So what I'm saying is the root of gout could be like triggered more with keto. So you kind of cancel it out, right? You get this inhibition of NLRP3 inflammasome, perhaps you're not getting your ketones high enough to inhibit it, but you're also giving your body what causes it, right? Or presumably causes it. So how do you kind of combat this? Well, I do think the ketogenic diet could be very powerful for modulating those flare-ups. But I think you also have to limit how much protein you're taking in if you're someone that has gout. So in this particular case, you might want to reduce your protein intake down to like 20%. And the protein that you do get, maybe you want to get less from meat sources and more from things like uh, chicken eggs, like duck eggs, uh, even pea protein, things like that. You might just have to modify so you're getting less of those purines in, especially less in the way of beef. So you just make these modifications. And additionally, I mean, I'm not going to go ahead and say that you need to buy a bunch of exogenous ketones, but this might be one of those instances where perhaps the use of exogenous ketones can drive up ketone levels a little bit higher and have that NLRP3 
sort of inhibition effect. I have a lot of issues with taking exogenous ketones, so I don't want to just encourage everyone to jump out there and try them, but perhaps it's a place for it. I think the better avenue is for you to do what you can to drive ketone levels higher. Now remember, ketone levels don't necessarily mean that you're losing weight. So just because your ketone levels are high doesn't mean that you're losing weight, okay? So I don't want you to get confused there. So what you may want to consider doing is trying to lose the weight first, Okay, and not worry as much about the gout flare-ups. Try to lose the weight because it's definitely going to help you out in a lot of ways, whether it's gout related or not. And then once you are at a little bit more of a maintenance weight or a weight that you're happier with, then you go ahead and shift the protein levels down a little bit, keep the fats high so your ketone levels can be a little bit higher. So you have more of the ketone levels inhibiting the NLRP3 inflammasome, but more importantly, in my opinion, less of the meat and less of the purines that can trigger those urate crystals. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel and I'll see you tomorrow.